these guys and uh, extending the hand. They're shaking and uh, I think we're about to start. We got turn one fetch polluted All right, so into a uh, preordain. So every turn really counts in this matchup. Um, you know, there's a little bit of jockeying for position, but you're trying to assemble your combo as quickly as possible and get a feel for where, how much disruption your opponents might have. Because of that card, the card's like a single duress from Adam is better than it normally would be. It's still getting, it's good not just because it gets a card out of Ross's hand, but because it's a Jataxian Pro, because it, it finds out what's in Ross's hand. And I mean, to that level, Adam's also playing Jataxian Pro. I was just looking at the list of players who uh, are at the top of the standings. The name that I'm actually really uh, excited by the most, honestly, is Kerry Oliver, because Kerry came here from England to play in this right. event. So it's really cool to see Kerry at a uh, healthy six wins. And Kerry's opponent is uh, Jeff Hoogland. Right, so Jeff also quite quite the rogue brewer. So it should be fun to watch that. I wish uh, that we could see that hopefully later this weekend. We have a Gitaxian Pro from Ross Miriam, Brainstorm, Cabal Therapy, Ponder, Brainstorm, Tendrils, Island. All right, so a, lot, a fair amount of work left to be done by Adam. He has a cantrip heavy hand, uh, so he's really just missing the ritual pieces, or and possibly a, and possibly a way to find a past, and, or possibly a way to like find a way to recur his spells. But he has a lot of the important parts here. Um, it looks like he will have around a turn three, I would imagine, with that sort of hand. And land go from Ross Miriam. If you're just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here in the booth with the one and only Matthias Hunt. A second turn to rest from Adam Prozac. Let's see what you've right. got. And spell Pierce. How about right. that card? And that untapped land from Ross really does represent the Spell Pierce. So Duress is what was drawn by Prozac off that Fyrdane. And Prozac all gas on the Ponder. He hits LED Infernal Tutor and I believe Dark Ritual. Or sorry, Cabal Ritual, the other ritual. So at this point, yeah, it does look like Adam, I believe, is going to be able to do a turn three kill next turn. All of which, of course, presumes that Ross doesn't have anything to say about it. Right, so the question is whether he will want to do one. Um, and that's, you know, the thing is Adam's holdings don't really improve too much with an additional turn. He does not have another duress. He can try to brainstorm for another duress or another sort of disruption. But otherwise, we'll see him probably go for the combo relatively quickly. Ross Miriam casts main phase brainstorm, finds a, uh, I think I saw a sneak attack, a brainstorm, and a land, but I'm not 100% sure about that second brainstorm if I saw it or not. All right, so yeah, Ross, we will catch here. Uh, looks like he has a misdirection, which he's putting back on top. He does have sneak attack. And we still actually haven't gotten to see Ross's hand. That duress was spell pierced, so we're not really sure the speed of his combo right now. In a lot of ways, the uh, Sneak and Show list is reminiscent of some combo decks from around the 2000-2001 era, which is to say, they can play it slow. They can play it slow and be a little bit like a control deck, and then win all at once. You're saying like, like an Illusions Donate sort of deck? Yeah, like an Illusions Donate, like tricks or like an early High Tide lists, which started out looking kind of controlling until they just went and said, now nah, you're dead. Right, so Ross, not even representing the spell pierce, he's gonna ponder here. He finds a second sneak attack, which he won't use, and he looks like he could have drawn a one of intuition. Instead, he's deciding to just shuffle. I think he might be uh, hunting for a force of will. You can see in the far background, uh, there's Caleb Durward shuffling up as well. Yeah, um, so yeah, he's hunting Hunting for a force of will is one thing to do. Uh, a card like intuition isn't even a card in this match because it's very unlikely that Ross will have time to catch an intuit, to even cast an intuition. He knows how fast Adam's hand is. I mean, he very well could be dead this turn. Main phase brainstorm, trying to build up a uh, powerful a turn. Land, another infernal tutor. I think I saw two land off two of lands, that brainstorm. Yep. And this should, yeah, he's putting back land. This should be enough for Adam to go for it. So, for those of you who are not familiar with Storm, walking through the combo, it's probably one of the most fun parts of the deck. He's putting back, he's getting rid of the tendrils right now. He's has an intention of finding the tendrils later. Uh, basically, what he's intended to do is cast a lot of ritual, a lot of rituals, then LED and Infernal Tutor. Uh, you can Infernal Tutor that at that point. 
for as long as he internal clears for a past in flames. If he has a red, he can get red mana off his LED, cast in flames, recast all his rituals, recast his infernal tutor for tendrils, and then tendrils for lethal. Is the standard combo option. One of the fun parts about Storm is there's a lot of non standard ways to do it too. You can see Adam was taking his time there trying to figure out what he wanted to do. I mean, does he go for the kill right now? A force of will could be a real problem. It looks like he might be doing it. We have a fetch. Well, the thing is, is that there's not a specifically good card to force of will. Um, Ross can, I think, like, probably the LED is the card you do on a force of will because, remember, Adam has a backup. He has a backup Infernal Tutor. So there's not, like, you could maybe force of will. I guess what you force of will is the past in flames, which is getting cast. That would probably, like, if he, if he goes for a past in flames kill, then you'd wait for that. It depends on, you know, the specifics of Adam's hand, whether it's the forcing of a critical mana accelerant, like Cabal Ritual at a certain point, or Lion's Eye Diamond at a certain point, um, or getting that Past in Flames, like you said, or even getting that first Infernal Tutor, knocking out that two mana can sometimes be so much that you can't finish going off, because you needed to be able to have the extra mana left over sometimes. Right. Adam's hand looks to be a little long on mana. Obviously, Ross doesn't know that. What was great is that uh, Ross, when he saw the hand, it was a bunch of cantrips. Those cantrips have since turned into a bunch of rituals, but Ross really doesn't know that. And it looks like more sculpting. Yeah, and so it's possible he's trying to dig for a duress here and go off the following turn. He does have to watch out if he does that, because the way Ross has played this game, to me at least, smells of a turn three kill on Ross's side. He's not... He's low on disruption, which means he's high on, he's heavy on something else. And Adam brain turns into an ad nauseum. If he chooses to go that route, he can he can not burn all his rituals. And it looks like he's going to go for the ad nauseum route. Ad nauseum, another good card to force a will. Yep, so this route still soft to force a will. Says go. Let's see what Ross can put forth to uh, put some pressure on. More and of the building at style. Not look like Ross has the kill this turn. That's going to be pretty dangerous for him. You would have to think if you're Ross that that you if you don't you need to end this turn with that leave with a couple counter spells. You know you have to know that Adam Adam has the ability to go off at this point. Maybe he can't go off through all the counter spells you have, but he certainly if you don't have anything will win. Ross contemplating what to return to the top of his library with a brainstorm. Looks like he's got two candidates well in mind. I think I see a... Uh, I think that I see a sneak attack in his hand. I'm not 100% sure of that. The way he's been holding his hand, it's been hard to see. And unfortunately, Evan Irwin has not yet perfected our 3D um, <laughs> technology. Coming soon, though, in I don't know how long, we're going to have 3D broadcasts so you could just crane your neck a little bit and tell. Right. So, I can see you trying to crane your neck, yeah, Matthias. It's, it's not working. Not working. The I'm testing it out. <laughs> no, technology has not been... Does not totally working. Get on it, Evan. Where's our 3D technology? Come so on. So it does look like Ross has the sneak attack in hand, which we kind of, which we already know, had known. He also has a gristle brand in hand. The question is how much mana and or disruption he has. The acceleration that he has access to in his deck, City of Traders, Ancient Tomb, and yeah. of course Lotus Petals. He also has a show and tell in hand right now. So what he can at very least do is he can show and tell out to the gristle brand and hope to draw a lot of. Uh, a lot of counter spells. This is going to put him down to 15, which is two activations of Gristlebrand worth of mana. Boom! The Gristlebrand is down. And at this point, um, he, as you said, can get two activations worth. That is very likely to find Force of Wills. Well, I mean, the, the interesting part is if Adam had kept that Tendrils, Adam couldn't, like, you know, there's the danger of Adam naturally just casting a Tendrils. But Ross is going to try to win this game, this turn, if he can find something. I saw a misdirection amongst all of those cards. Misdirection only effective against the Cabal Therapy that Adam might open up with. Right. Now, of course, if he does misdirect the Cabal Therapy, Adam can just name, for example, Ali from Cairo, or any other card that he does not have in his deck. And Ross preparing to look steep. So he's going to have to survive one more turn. He gets to have a great hand to do it with. Remember, he drew seven off this gristle brand. We'll see what he picks. By going to eight, he, Adam does not have to make a very big storm to win this game. 
And uh, Ross has an Emrakul in his hand, does not discard it. He's planning on trying to kill Adam next turn. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and sneak attack him for, with the Emrakul, as it looks like. Here it comes, right, Lion's Eye Diamond. This is actually one of those cards that is potentially worth countering. And he's going to go ahead and start with a Cabal Ritual. With, with Cabal Ritual, he does have Threshold, so that's that's a, that's big, a big game right here, right? Five black, that's the second spell of the game. Now he's going to go ahead and try to up by three more, up to eight black, which is the third spell of the game. Um, at this point, this is, you know, it's a little bit of a game of chicken here. We'll see, he's going to try to draw out the first counter spell. Ad nauseum can't, Ross probably cannot let Ad nauseum resolve. Three mana remains. And things are grim, but not over for Ross. All right, so he knows once that, I don't think Ross can let Ad nauseum resolve. It seems unlikely. The hard part is that, um, the reason he can't activate Grizzle Band a second time is he needs one life to pay to force a blow. <laughs> Oh boy, I think it's resolving. Oh wow, and he has sacrificed the LED with that? It looks like he's, he's preparing to sacrifice it, it looks like. Right, Inferno oh two. wow, 16. Dark Ritual, 15. 15. Swamp, LED. So remember, he gets to- 14. Yep, he gets to continue to take as many of these as he wants. 12, 11. That's a Cabal Therapy. 10, 9. And yeah, with all these cards, it seems unlikely that Ross will be able to, yeah, he's going to go ahead and stop there. The therapy is good enough. Nine. Maybe he's going to continue going. Let's see what he's debate, debating here on it. Eight. Lotus Petal, great Seven. Mind. Six. Five. Now there's a question mark. Four. Oh, I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> yep. So Staps goes down to four life, gets that entire stack of cards. LED is still on the table. And then we're three black floating. We're probably going to see a Jataxian probe followed up by Cabal Therapy. So probe, fifth card, fifth spell for the turn. Yeah, at this point, Adam has more than enough spells. It's all, so we'll see. Emrakul, Emrakul, sneak attack, sneak attack, ponder, and just a misdirection from Ross really is not going to be enough. This is a green light for Adam. <laughs> we'll see that therapy. Uh, therapy's gonna go ahead and he's gonna name. Doesn't really matter. He'll go ahead and name. I'll misdirect it to yep, you. Misdirects back to back to Rosa. Uh, so I, I will name Blaze of Glory or any other card. Yeah. Ross is out of ways to interact. All Adam Prosec has to do is cast an Infernal Tutor um, with LED, crack an LED, and that should be enough to win. He's gonna go ahead and play like two more LEDs just you know to be safe. But all he has to do is find that tendrils, which should be which should be easy at this point. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you know how to play this game. Right. So from game one goes to Adam <laughs> And you know, one of the things we saw earlier, Reed Duke in a uh, unwinnable game situation. Reed Duke locked out by a mud deck, but winning because the mud player forgot to use Chalice of the Void to counter Reed Duke's lightning bolts. Oh wow! But that was, uh, that was last round. You no, know, that was a couple of rounds ago. And the thing is, is some people said that we're spectating, you know, online, like, oh, you know, just goes to show that you should never ever concede. Well, Ross Miriam, he knows Adam Prozac is not going to make a mistake on a gold fishing moment in Storm. Well, and it's possible that Adam just verbally said what he was going to do, and Ross is fine with that. You know, yeah. there is a tendrils in the deck. That's not really a secret to anyone. Yeah, it's not like Adam is running the full bluff tournament deck where he's like, zero tendrils. I'm just going to yeah. see if people concede to me. Well, especially because the top eight is known decks. That would be a really <laughs> yeah. odd gambit to be running in this well, tournament. Well, gambit. I don't even, it's not even reasonable, right? <laughs> Uh, so we go to the sideboards, and uh, notoriously, Storm sideboards are often very, very uh, small nudges here or there. The big reason, you do not want to sideboard in too many cards. You right. can cease to be the deck 
that you need to be if you sideboard in too much. So he has a second Cabal Therapy, a third Cabal Therapy. Um, Three Carpet of Flowers, I'm sure, are going to come in. And he might stop there. Right, so, you know, and that's probably the case that he'll stop there. Nothing else seems particularly strong right now. Um, he may, there's a Chain of Vapor. I just, probably doesn't expect any really big hate out of Ross's deck. I mean, there's nothing wrong with bringing in, uh, you know, one chain one of vapor chain of if you exactly. want. You know, uh, I'm not sure. I am not Adam Prozac, so I am not sure what the cards that you can are that you can afford to shave are in these various matchups. There are certainly things that you can do to shave things around, but that that's the kind of thing where you have to so intimately know a deck. And uh, I, I'm not a storm master, so we'll have to wait and see what Adam Prozac does to change his deck around. I've seen him play this matchup before. I know he'll bring in Carpet of Flowers. I'm not sure what else will change. Uh, on Ross's side, um, the cards he has are fairly straightforward. He has two Red Elemental Blasts, which he'll almost certainly use. He has three Groff Diggers Cages. That could stop a Passing Flames kill. I'm not, I don't think he'll use that. Um, I really think it's probably just the Red Blast. And he has two, sorry, he has two Vendillion Clicks. That's possible to use them, though I'm not sure how strong that actually is in the matchup. It's a lot of mana, but was a pretty quick matchup. So we may just see Red Blast from Ross. Now we're going to find out with uh, Ross Miriam now on the play. You know, he was very close to taking things over with his Gristlebrand, but just did not find the kinds of things he needed to stop Adam Prozac from resolving an ad nauseum. Opening sevens. Uh, really, remember when you're looking at, in a matchup like this, what you're doing is you're you're looking. Both players are probably looking here at how fast their hand is. You know, what's the goldfish do? Uh, Ross goes and shows his hand as he's mulliganing. How Prozac follows. Both of these decks um, are are decks that, in some ways, don't like to be mulliganing. They're trying to piece together multiple things. Adam, as a storm deck specifically doesn't like to mulligan more so. What he can do to get out of it, though, is actually pretty amazing. A single casting of Ad Nauseam removes all of the pain of every mulligan that you've ever had to deal with ever before. Right. So Adam has that explosive way to get out of a mulligan, but outside of that, you know, his deck really does use every card because it's this engine he's bringing together. Ross is much more comfortable mulliganing. All he needs, you know, is an Emrak is a, a Gristle Brand, a Show and Tell, and some lands, and that's just enough. Both of these decks running a lot of library manipulation. We see uh, the card draw side of things for Adam Prozac. Probe, Gitaxian Probe, Brainstorm, Preordain, Ponder. And though costly, Infernal Tutor is still, uh, still a card at two mana. Sometimes you just actually want to get a second copy of something you already have. You don't have to be hellbent for Infernal Tutor to be a valuable card in this matchup. Getting an extra duress on turn two can be a part of how you push through for a turn three or a turn four. Alright, so on sixes, we'll see if either of them can put together one of those hands. Uh, Ross looks like he's fairly set in on his, and we'll see whether Prozac's following suit. And there we go. Our Turn one land, Misty Rainforest, and Tropical Island. Alright, so Adam Prozac uh, does have a Jataxian probe, instead, he chooses to lead on Preordain. Probe is a little more interesting in his deck. He has to be sure when he wants to time it, because it does add to his storm count if he's going for a storm kill. And Ross fetches at the end of Adam's turn. I said when he's going for a storm kill, if he's going, sometimes, you know, they're really just trying to count to 10, and sometimes they're casting ad nausea. In which case, that one, then storm count doesn't matter. Volcanic Island at the end of the turn. You see, Ross, Looks like he does have Ugh. an answer to and exactly what I said before. Turn two. All he needs, what all he needed to win Woods was some lands, a show and tell, and a gristle brand. Ross has all three. There it is. Adam does get a land off it. Is that going to be enough? His hand has to have some pretty good play to it. Let's see what you got over there, Ross. Uh, brain, sneak attack, brainstorm, fetch land, and uh, seven more cards off the top of the deck. What Adam can do. 
is, I mean, uh, he really just has to storm the whole way. I doesn't say he can try to just trip up Ross's life totals so that he can't use the Gristle brand. Not really a, a reasonable plan, though. Yeah, Adam basically has to win right now. All right, so he starts with a brainstorm. I don't think he, he doesn't seem to think he can do it. He has some dark rituals. The biggest problem he's going to have is going to be blue mana. He has that one fetch land, so he's got to make sure he can preserve his blue mana for when he needs it. You might wonder why does Adam need to do it right now? Well, effectively Ross is at a uh, virtual 21 extra cards, right. including numbers of counter spells of various sorts. If Adam doesn't win right now, he will most likely will not be able to win tomorrow. Yeah, the bigger thing is that, remember, Ross, all, Adam also has to try to choose a line which is not which can win through a Force of Will. Ross, with the top 14 cards of his deck at his disposal, almost certainly can find the Force of Will if he needs to. 21 cards is a lot of cards. If you uh, weren't around when Illusions Donate, the Illusions of Grandeur Donate deck was around, well, we see a chain of vapor targeting, I believe, our Mr. Gristlebrand here. Yeah, and that's something Ross is going to... Okay, now we're gonna, Ross is going to have to dig for a Force of Will. Um, that's a spell he really can't let resolve, especially given his hand. It's just a sneak attack and... Brainstorm. Well, I mean, if he finds a Lotus Petal, right, he can drop the Gristlebrand down again next turn and put Adam back in the same position. One, two, That's three, fair. four. There's a Force of Will. Yikes. That might and be he it. Found, he found your Lotus Petal as well. But that said, it's yeah. going to get forced. Yeah, I'll take that. All right, so at this point, we have uh, a Storm actually up to three <laughs> and four with Cabal Therapy. He named something. He named Sneak Force Attack. Sneak, he named Sneak Attack? Yeah. Okay, he, there I we go. He picked the, the quantity he knew over the guess that he didn't know. Yep. And it's also a card to fear. You can see the Vendillion Click sitting there, hanging out. One of the things we saw at uh, the Star City Games Milwaukee event, um, the, the Legacy event, Vendillion Click used to really, really great effect in the finals from the Sneak and Show deck. Right. That deck actually was won by Adam Jansen piloting Sneak and Show. Yep. Right, so it's Axiom Probe, what do you have? Yeah, How about that, Adam? Back. Ritual, Ritual, Preordain. And that's that's so good for Ross. You know, he, he's not really in too much fear of a kill next turn either. Draws another probe, probably not going to cast that one. He's gonna make a scalding turn. Land, time. Lotus Petal. Yep, and at this point he's just trying to reduce his hand size to avoid discards, and Gristlebrand's going to start chunking, chunking in. The um, life link on Gristlebrand is so devastating. Yeah, it's really interesting. So normally, you know, one hit with Emrakul wins the game, right? And you sometimes look at Gristlebrand and you say, hey, Adam gets more turns, but really one hit with Gristlebrand pretty much does the same. It's drawing seven cards every time it hits in a deck with a lot of counter spells. Preordain. Brainstorm and Lion's Eye Diamonds. Yeah, and that's going to be of no help to Adam. He's going to probably have to ditch the Lion's Eye Diamond, keep the Brainstorm, and gives him a second try at finding something. He also has to worry about Spell Pierce right now if he casts the Brainstorm. And we saw a uh, Spell Pierce drawn by Ross Miriam. Well, he knows from game one that, that Ross plays it. Ritual. And he, I think he's going to go for the kill this turn. He's starting out on Ritual so that he can better play around Spell Pierce by spending black mana instead of his fetch land. Nonetheless, I think it will bait out the Spell Pierce, and Adam will probably likely end his turn at that. See Ross Miriam, a total of five mana in play. Only three lands, but that Ancient Tomb and that Lotus Petal, a little bit more mana for him. Right. He's going to go ahead and cast Vendillion him. Click. Vendillion Click in response to wow. the Dark Ritual. And that's pretty brutal. Um, what Adam can do, he does have a Brainstorm. He can try to hide, draw three and hide a good card. But if he does that, then Ross says keep it. Right. No, it's, it, it's, There's no good things here for not, Adam. Yeah, there are no great plays. And I mean, Ross will probably switch away the Brainstorm. To the bottom. Let's see what you get. 
Unless it's a brainstorm, I think Adam's in real trouble. I mean, he's already in trouble. Unless it's a brainstorm or a ponder or something like right now. There's the spell pierce. On the dark ritual. Adam says, oh, it is a ponder. In response. And that was a little, yep. Spends that. So he pays it. And he goes up to four black. Gets up to four black, four black, four black. There we go. And that dark ritual is on. So we have plenty of storm happening this turn. We have been dealing with dark ritual, dark ritual, spell pierce. Uh, so if he can ponder into a tendrils. If he can ponder into a tendrils, that will be enough. Well, I mean, presuming, of course. Oh, man. That will do it. That should do it. There will be at least six spells on the turn. So that is, he's going to hopefully fish for a tendrils. I think. Well, I would force oil this ponder. Yeah, Ross does have access to the force of oil. Uh, I don't know if he has one right now. I haven't seen his hand in a little bit. <laughs> I think if you're Ross, you may want to draw seven to try to force a will this ponder. I agree. Because the, the tendrils is death no matter what. Right. And Ross tanking here. Let's see if he's going to let the ponder happen. They're count looks like they're counting storm right now. Ross wants to know, is this tendrils he finds going to be And he does roll? do yeah. the draw. Three, four, five. Seven. He's drawn a spell pierce, but no way to cast it. Oh, now we're gonna find out if it's over. Not likely, but it is possible. And Adam with the OW! <laughs> <laughs> and the top card. Oh! <laughs> <Adam> <laughs> <Pitchett>. <laughs> On the third one. Oh. You see it over there. <laughs> oh! And Jacob Van Loon walks over just in time to miss seeing the win. <laughs> War player at 8 0 at the end of day one. <laughs> Lauren Lee a, on a Sam Black. We're all hanging out. Dramatic tendrils of agony. Wow, just. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That was some awesomeness. I think Ross, a little shell shock here. I think, I think, he, I think he knows he might have let that one go away. Yeah, and he goes and uh. he repeats what just happened there. Um, oh my goodness. The odds were low. <laughs> a little. I mean, the, it, there's one tundra in the deck, maybe two if he sided the other one in, which I can't imagine he did. Oh, that was exciting. Wow. So, great performance <laughs> today by both of them. Adam Posak will be your leader heading into day two at 8 0. Oh, wow. Ross Miriam at 7 1.